case. He went and got a candle, and he had discovered a new case on his own. 1806, two years later, they started to guide tours through the cave. They were calling it Weir's Cave, because his name was Bernard Weir. And we have had continuous tours since 1806. So that makes this America's oldest show case. We've had seven private owners, but now the tiny town here, Grotto, has owned the cave for just a couple years so far. I'm still pretty excited about it, too. These guys on the ceiling are the stalactites. And the ones that stand up off the floor are stalagmites. Now, I remember the difference from the word ceiling. Stalactites hold on tight to the ceiling. Stalagmites might reach the ceiling. Okay? Here's the column right there. That's when a stalagmite on the floor and the stalactite above it finally connects and they go all the way floor to ceiling. This is a massive stalagmite right here. But it became a column when it joined up to the stalactite above. Now, there's lots of color in the cave. You can see this room especially, very colorful. These are different minerals when you see the different colors. Minerals in the clay, in the limestone, and in the formation rock. I'm going to point out three colors that I think you really are worthy aware of. The first and most important cave mineral is called calcium carbonate. Now, I'm going to shorten that to calcite from now on. But I'm sure you've heard of calcium, right? Calcium? Have you heard of that? Yes. No. It's in milk you drink, calcium. It's also in your bones and your teeth. So if it's in teeth and bones and milk, what color do you think? I hope your bones and your teeth are white, right? And your milk is usually white. Yes, that's it. Look up there on the ceiling. See the bright white stalactites right there. That's calcite. Now, anytime you see these bright white spots, this is current rapid growth in the cave. Usually they're wet and drippy every day. That'd be that bright white color. By how much white you're going to see in our cave, you'll know it's a pretty rapidly growing cave. Now, this dark reddish, orangish red color that you see on the walls and the formations around us, that's iron oxide, iron. Iron dissolves in the groundwater, mists down into the cave during the drier period, and gives it what we call cave rust. Now, it's still growth, but it is a much slower growth period. And some of these formations might have gone through different periods and actually have rings inside them. Others are solid white until they stop growing and then they get covered with the rest. Now, you see a little bit of blue green on the ceiling over there. See that? I had a guy on my tour last week who thought that was copper. Because, of course, it does look like verdigris, like you see in the Statue of Liberty. But it's not. It's not even a mineral. It's a little bit of cave algae. You can see it's wet right there, a little brighter green. Now, algae comes into a cave naturally in a water cave on like a squirrel or a raccoon. It's a little pollen coming in and taking roots inside the cave as they're plant for. But what's not natural in this cave is us bringing in a lot of pollen and turning on electric light, which lets the algae grow. Now, I tell you this so you can understand when you see green, it's usually in the hot spot of the light. And now you're going to understand why the rooms are hopefully dark in front of us and why I turn off the lights behind us when we go in and out. Because we want to keep the cave natural. We don't want to cover with algae. By the way, um, I told you the wet spots here are wet and drippy almost every day. This room is not very drippy today because we haven't had a lot of rain in the last two weeks. But if you do get an accidental drip today, this special is called the cave kit. And it's supposed to give you a lucky week, so keep track. But they have to be accidental. You can't find a wet spot on the floor and camp out over it. That doesn't count. <laughs>